Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. On today's video, I wanna talk about if you're looking for land, and land that's maybe all grown over and fallow and all, uh, all brushy covered, why you need a pig first thing to get your land under control. Right, Mongo? Got to have a pig. So come along, let's talk pig talk and land. Two of my favorite things. Let's sit it close. Get your face in there somewhere. Them daggers. So post-global event that we're not allowed to talk about on YouTube has got a lot of people out looking for land. They want to get away from the major urban areas. They want to be a little bit more rural and of course try to be a little bit more self-reliant. So there's a lot of people out looking for land and it makes it's obviously got the uh, the uh, demand up high and people are looking at more and more fallow land or land that's just really in rough shape hadn't been tended for a long time and that's where i am right now i'm actually standing on a farm close by to us that believe it or not has only laid fallow for less than 15 years this actually was all garden at one point uh, i remember when the the guy actually had a had a school bus sitting there that that's where he kept his pigs but anyway um this was gardened and and all all uh mowed and maintained there was a log cabin here unfortunately the gentleman that lived in it passed away when it burned but it, it, you know, little as 15 years ago it was a thriving little homestead but now it's covered in autumn olive and sapling uh multiflora rose has taken over in places there's just a lot of things that have grown up, a green briar and, and blackberry, uh, milkweed, you can see everywhere here, all the little pods. So unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, when land is left fallow, and I'm speaking east of the Mississippi type situation, if that's left fallow, then it will return to hardwoods, especially here in the Appalachian region, it turns to hardwood and turns to hardwood quick because the seed bank is there and established and of course then we have the invasives like um, autumn olive here but if left fallow it will return to appalachian hardwoods very very quickly and just think of what our the work our forefathers did i think whoever cleared this this is the original homestead for the entire valley including my property whoever did this back in the day did it probably by horse and oxen and that type of stuff so worked his butt off to clear some land and now it's just all grown back up so if you're thinking about acquiring some land that's grown over, old farmland that's grown up, or you've already acquired some farmland and you're thinking, okay, how do I get this cleaned up? What's the best way? Well, there's obvious options, of course. You can bring in heavy equipment, you know, dozers, excavators, all that type of stuff. Or you can buy a big tractor and, and try to mow down a lot of these things with a bush hog and, and clean all that up as well. You can obviously grab your chainsaw and just dive in and go head first in all that manual labor. That's an option. Or you could go a more natural route and either get you a whole flock of goats or get pigs. And I'm gonna give you some reasons why I think pigs are even the best choice out of all of those. Well, going out and buying a dozer and an excavator to clear off a bunch of land probably is gonna be cost prohibitive for most of us. Some of us can afford that, but most of us, including me, cannot. Uh, but there's rental options, of course. You can rent that equipment, but that's still expensive. Then there's the expertise in knowing how to run it and of course, um, just the overall issue. If, if we came in here and dozed all of this, then we have all that overburden. We have all that slash that has to be burned or, or chipped or piled up or something, right? You either just leave it or you gotta deal with it. So while you can get land cleared fast, there's definitely some cons that go along with that. Now a tractor and a bush hog do make a lot of sense, especially if you're gonna need that piece of equipment further on down the road. But again, that's a pretty good outlay of cash. And the bush hog is going to allow you to take care of things like these, some of these uh, autumn olives. Some of those have gotten pretty large. I need to take care of those. Um, but there's issues, especially if you're in the Appalachian region or you're on uneven terrain where it may not be the safest thing to do. I definitely wouldn't take my tractor up the side of that hill uh, while I would mow where I'm standing now and usually do. And manual labor, of course, is just that. It's manual and it's a lot of labor. And back in my 20s when I bought this place, I had more uh, brawn than I had brains, I guess, and was fine with just jumping in with a chainsaw and going at it. But as I get older, I realize there's gotta be smarter ways to do things. 
And as far as goats go, I don't really need to say more. Goats are goats, right? So that should eliminate that option right there. So what are pigs gonna to bring to the table here that, that makes me feel that they're the best option? Well, there's a lot of things. I'll go down some lists real quick. First and foremost, they're just gonna clear the brush, the obvious. You can see here, this is a section that the pigs have access to and there is very little underbrush. Now there's some deadfall, but there's no underbrush. You can see even this creeping vine, we always called it Indian trip vine, but uh, this creeping vine that's high up above the pigs, that's the only place it exists. They eat all of that down. There's no green briar. There's no multiflora rose. There's no autumn olive. This whole area right here used to be all autumn olive and they've eaten it all out. If we look down the fence line, you can see here's the fence where that white post is. This is pigs, no pigs. Look at the little sycamore saplings growing up along my road outside of the pig fence, but yet there's none inside. So they take care of all of that, eat all the saplings, all the underbrush. They love poison ivy. They'll eat grapevine. They'll eat the blackberry brambles. I mean, that's the, the great thing about a pig is they're looking for forage, nuts and fruit or <laughs> nuts and those type of things, but also grubs and the tender little shoots that come off roots of most of the small plants. One other benefit, which some of you may like and some of you may not, is that pigs will actually eat snakes. If they come across a snake and it looks tender to them, then they're gonna jump all over that. And take care of that. A pig is an omnivore. He's not an he's not an herbivore. He's not a ruminant. So they eat a lot of that type of stuff. One other benefit that I find unique, and especially in this area, is a pig will help you find um, a water source. So anywhere that we have wallows that the pigs have made on their own, it's because there's water. It's either a seep or a small spring or a collection point, and they've made a wallow. So I can go around and say, "Oh, look, there's a source of water. There's a source of water." And out of all the options I've listed for clearing land, a pig is the only one you can eat. Well, goat you can eat as well, uh, but I'll take bacon any day over goat meat. You can't eat in the other options unless you eat manual labor, which makes you Jeffrey Dahmer, which makes you a psycho. So another benefit of pigs is the infrastructure costs. The, the costs it takes to actually keep a pig where you want it to be to clear the land are extremely low. If you guys have followed the channel, you've seen that all I have between me and this uh, 500 pound boar, he's lost a little weight, um, is a single strand of electric. And they really respect that. So all the way around this entire paddock, this pasture that's about, I had to guess, I'd say about three acres, is just a single strand of electric. So you need an energizer, of course, which those are pretty inexpensive. Ground rods, those type of things, no big deal there. And even fence posts, this, this section of fence is, uh, is where we are testing a lot of things. So you can see I've got your traditional step in or your traditional T post, which those are four or five bucks, depending on which one you get. And then here's just a little cheap fiberglass step in post that works well. Here's our experiment with three quarter inch conduit. So this is just uh, PVC conduit. And that's been there for about two years now and been fine. And then over here, we actually have galvanized harder conduit. One inch stuff. And then other places where it's convenient, we just attach to the tree. So there's all kinds of things you can use for scrap. I use even the old gas pipe that's all over this property. I use that for big corner posts because it's heavy duty, I can drive it in. So the fence posts can get pretty cheap too. And while a shelter isn't required, I would suggest just for the welfare of the animal that you have a shelter. Now the boar uh, shelter we have here is a permanent shelter, but you could do something simple uh, that's movable, almost like a large doghouse. Uh, I've got one up here that I'll show you that we built when we first got pigs, and it sufficed until the pigs got too big, and one of them did a Fat Albert maneuver right through the sidewall. But you live and you learn. But something like that, it can easily hook up to the tractor and just drag it wherever I need to. Really, a pig just needs to be able to have shade since they don't sweat, so as long as they've got some cover either under the trees uh, around the underbrush you're trying to clear out or you put up a temporary shelter it gives them that opportunity to get out of the sun and of course water and food now you do you still have to feed them even though they eat all this good stuff you still have to feed them right mongo there are not uh, ruminants they can't just live off browse alone now some of you cooney cooney people are arguing with me already but i'm just saying this pig is an omnivore it needs protein so you still have to give it some feed, but with all the browse that you'd have that you're using to clear land, you can, you can reduce the amount of feed that you would need dramatically. 
So why do I choose pigs over goats? Couldn't goats do the same thing? Well, I mean, a goat could be efficient in that, and I like to kid with all the goat people. Get it, kid, goat. <laughs> anyway, that a goat will, will eat some of the brush down, but they are not going to be the ground disturbers that the pigs are. In the situations we run into, I not only want the leaves of the poison ivy vine eaten, I want the root ripped up at the base of the tree. The autumn olive, I just don't want the leaves nibbled on and the tender shoots. I want the whole thing uprooted. I want the multiflora gone. I want all of that stuff turned over. I want the ground disturbed. I want rocks exposed. If there's tires that some turkey left from the previous owners, I want the pigs to uproot those and make them easy for me to get them. Trust me, that happens. <laughs> And because they're generally a larger animal, obviously pigs produce more manure than the goats. And that's actually a good thing with land you're trying to reclaim because you want that to be integrated back into the soil. Most of these fallow far farms, they have zero topsoil and that's why all this scrub stuff's growing so well. Pigs generally are less susceptible to disease. Now that is debatable, but in my experience, it all, it all comes back to habitat, but that pigs are less disease prone and, and uh, less uh, parasite load, that type of thing, in my experience with pigs. And as I mentioned with the fence, the fence is a cheaper option. So goats require much more fence. You're not gonna keep a goat where you want him with a single strand of electric fence. Before you know it, he's gonna be standing on the hood of your car. Ask me how I know. And my other reasons are, I guess, more of a personal thing. Um, I think a pig has way more personality. Um, I, you know, a boar is not going to pee all over his head like, uh, like a buck does. So that's nice. Um, they're fun to watch. Now I know you goat people think goats are fun to watch, but pigs are hilarious to watch. Uh, pigs taste a lot better and pigs don't look like the spawn of Satan. Goats just freak me out with that. So I wanna give you some quick tips. If you decide to take my advice and get some pigs on your new land that you've acquired or you're about to acquire it and, and you're ready to get started clearing, you say, yep, I want pigs. So here's some tips to follow real quick. Number one, be prepared to move them around. If you've got an area that you wanna clear out, just know that they're not gonna be there indefinitely cause it'll get to the point where they put too much strain on that land and you may wanna move them to another section. So plan for that with your fence, maybe step in posts, temporary fencing, or a larger permanent fence that you can bust up into paddocks. That'll be really handy. Number two, if there's an area that's getting hit too hard or you wanna protect a certain tree or something, just fence it off. You can take a strand of electric and put it around that um, or run your fence right up to the edge of that. And what's funny is pigs get to know electric so well, I can put electric around a fence and it not even be energized or around an object and it not even be energized. Next tip, if you have a particularly uh, aggressive invasive like autumn olive or it's a real tough spot, they don't seem to be working on too much. One neat thing I do is, especially this time of year, take some field corn toss it at the base of that, even kind of you know, throw it around, kick some leaves over it, they'll be able to smell that and they'll come through and to get every last kernel of field corn, they would obliterate this autumn olive. Another tip is make sure you give them access to woods for the shade. That's the easiest way to come up with shade instead of trying to build some complicated shelter. Just simply give them the area that you want to clear, the edges of meadows, but let them have access to the woods and they'll be able to go in and find that shade. Another tip is you don't need a whole bunch of pigs to do this. You can do this with just a couple. Now I recommend you always have at least two. They're herd animals, they'll be extremely lonely. And along those lines, get to know your pigs. If you're gonna have them, spend some time with them. Maybe feed them some treats, hang out, scratch behind their ears, that kind of stuff. That way they're used to you, they're not afraid of you. And when it comes time to move them, they're just easier to handle. And if you're working a really hard area and they've really cleaned it up, they've tilled a bunch and now you've got all this open ground and it's time to move them out, go ahead and invest in, in seeding that and mulching that, doing whatever it takes to keep that bare earth covered up and get a cover crop going there. That way you don't waste the effort that you've done with all that soil and all that great manure just being washed away because you didn't cover it up. All right, so I wanna hear from you. Comment below as to why you think you wanna have pigs or maybe why you got pigs for the similar reasons or maybe I missed something and that's why you got pigs. And goat people, if you wanna spew some goat love down in the comments, go for it. Well, I appreciate everybody watching. Take care.